World Star Hip Hop was taken down also. Oh, well. Yeah. There was like, at, at least last night before I went to bed, there was over 40 different hosting sites that had been contacted. But that's only in America, the censorship. And that's actually a more Anglo type thing that in, in other, I mean, maybe China and other places, but uh, that type of censorship of violence is not universal. No. David, it was an international effort. Multiple hosting sites located outside of the U.S. were uh, le- had the strong arm put on them by Globo Homo. So my understanding is you can go to Daily Stormer and get the BitTorrent if you want to watch the video. Yeah, and and that's another aspect, Brundle, is like the 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 idea of this being live streamed on the internet and that we don't have enough autists to like catch this is kind of foolish at this point, you know. Like the the 4chan intelligence agency or whatever you want to call it. Because like, it was being no amount on. of censorship ever scrubs this stuff completely. Well, I'm saying, God forbid, that people. I mean, from what I I haven't seen the actual Facebook, but people were actually cheering it on. And I know in Halsey's uh, chat last night, who knows who was doing it? Of uh, people were, you know, he was deleting it, but people were cheering it on. Well, I mean, that's only natural. A- Any time any of these events happen. It- it's like there's always a escalation and double down. You know, well, God forbid. I mean, if you want to put it to yourself, were any of you in your heart glad that this guy did that? Well, I did see a mathematical formula about like two generations down. You know, how many babies these people would have produced in New Zealand, and within two generations, it becomes like almost a thousand people. So you're saying you didn't condone you think the guy should be executed for his crimes or whatever, but in your heart, uh, God forbid, you were happy that this happened. That's a question you know full well no one here can answer honestly. Because right. in your heart, you are glad this guy did it. No, because no matter what uh, the, the – if, if I let me just let, – let me go play the, the architect that you think I am. If I said this man is a hero, if I said he should be – they should make a fascist Mount Rushmore and he should be on it, uh, that would be the end of me. Anything approximating that, anything close to that would be the end. So this is a question that it's, it's the it's whole... Like your heart rip, it's it's different rip, than making him a hero. People like me and Faust and Eki and Brundle can't actually speak how we want to speak, but any other demographic can do exactly that. The Black Lives Matter types four or five years ago can be hailed as heroes on every corner of black Twitter. Your people can, can uh, hold up Menahem Begin as a great man, even though he murdered British officials, even though they committed terrorism to wrest the, the, the land that is now Israel away from the Palestinians, away from the British. In a sane world, anyone who commits an act in advancement of his people would be regarded favorably by their people. But in our world, that is verboten for whites. Well, it's not I mean, because you can't change how people feel in their heart. So you're saying if your heart, God forbid, rejoiced when you heard about this attack, you can't change the way you feel. I didn't. I my, When I first heard about this, I didn't care. I have fatigue of the endless cycle of violence and yeah. horseshit. That was my that was in my heart. I only watched the video for the first time before this stream started. And it was startling, but I also don't have a particular problem with violence. I don't have a I don't have a like liberal anti violence morality. Uh, would I do what that man did? I would find it very difficult to do that. Uh, but I don't yeah, it's it's funny because I've everyone here knows how 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 uh, strong I've been about Kirk Doolittle in, in making these kinds of statements. And now here we are, essentially somebody, Kirk Doolittled. He Kirk Doolittled this mosque. Um, and it was, you know, to say, to condemn it, I mean, I wouldn't do it. No one I know would do it. No one on this panel would do it. But on But did your heart rejoice? No, I, I, I don't care. I have no feeling one way or I have no emotion. So say the downfall of your enemy. Is it going to say these Muslims did nothing wrong? They had the right to be in that society. They had the right they to didn't migrate. Have right. They had the right to practice Islam. And this guy is going to burn in hell and he deserves the death penalty. Or you said, okay, maybe he deserves the death penalty. It was a crime against humanity. This guy has to die. However, your heart rejoiced at the downfall of your enemy. They are not my enemy. These people are the unfortunate 
scapegoats of a you methodic, think Muslims wouldn't be wouldn't if it weren't for Jews, Muslims wouldn't be migrating. Yes, exactly. That's absolutely the case. If it will, if it weren't for the anti-white whites and the Jews, yes. I mean, it's funny because this guy mentions Jews in his manifesto only that, once. Uh, by saying, are you anti-Semitic? And he said, no, a Jew living in Israel is no enemy of mine so long as they seek, uh, do not seek to sub subvert or harm my people. Yeah. Yeah, but really no Jew thinks that way. Certainly no political Jew. And you you would fit that category of Jew who can't seem to mind his own yeah, business. Yeah, you support highest. Well, I'm not minding my own bit. business. I'm saying I have a right to live in this country just as much as you do. This country is no more yours than mine. David, and so, and so I will they, never accept you as an American. Well, that's why I will never accept the non up killing each other. That's why probably American. we're going to end up killing each other one day, right? It's just inevitable because we fundamentally because disagree. This land alone. is not yours. It's mine just as much as yours. <laughs> For and so your heart awful. rejoices at the murder of these people just like your heart would probably rejoice at the murder of me. I actually keep, like you. Keep, keep, we keep like you, David. Nobody's trying to murder you, dude. But your heart would rejoice if it happened. It's like, David, you're half white. Like you're you. I mean, you could choose. You're like a yeah. like a half you elf. Told, you could like choose to live forever. We fundamentally yeah, disagree. Where, where, where you say this America. land is yours, denounce and I say, no, it's not yours. American, David. Yeah. Take off the yarmulke. I lived in Israel. I don't take off the yarmulke. I lived. I, work I, a construction I never job. <laughs> My work in construction, but I lived in Israel. I didn't try to become an Israeli citizen. I'm not trying to. I'm a proud American, but the America I live in is multicultural. It's a haven to immigrants. It's not a white society. Yeah, you are a fake American, David. I'm not a fake American. You're the fake American. That's why you're hiding <laughs> yourself. You would be the one on hate watch, not me. Oh, there's a reason. There's a reason hey, you're scared and I'm not that, scared. David? And you might what have your guns, that that and you might rejoice of. in your heart at the murder of innocent people, or whatever you're thinking. I don't care. You this rejoice in your heart at the murder of innocent Palestinians. I don't. No, Duvid openly... doesn't. Duvid doesn't. He is. He is. He wants open borders for Israel. He is consistent in that. This ah, is the, well, why doesn't he go to Israel and do that then? This is this is the fundamental dishonesty because Duvid, as well read as you are, you know that the SPLC, the uh, ADL, that these are Jewish organizations. And you know that the fabrication of hate speech, of racism, is a Jewish invention. And you know full well that a man like Faust, who has family in this country for a very long time, not to question your Americanness, uh, would be able to... There's nothing crazy about what Faust says. I say crazier things than Faust. And yet, well, what No White Guilt said is saying it's it's going to be your fellow white that's going to stop you. It's not going to be Muslims or Jews. It's going to be yes, your fellow white who believes because, in multiculturalism. Have, yeah, the Shabbos Goyim. Because you've turned because Jewish people have turned the university system into a uh, a, a satanic uh, institution of white self hatred, and they've insisted that every white man and woman for seventy years has to pass through this religious rite of self immolating. And 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 uh, refuting their own heritage in their own past. Faust has to hide. Ecke and Brundle have to hide because the moral center of America has been reversed. So you're saying you're, you're treating this whole fact of nature attitude that you have is there's a causal link and there's a group of people who are largely responsible for it. And that's your that's your diagnosis of what you consider oh, the, the problem. That's you saying, well, I mean, they, there's disputes on so many levels whether you're going to blame this solely on the Jews, and that's why he said like, so oh, Muslims, Muslims would not, other people would not be trying to get into America if it, you know, if it weren't for the Jews. There's no natural. Whites were brought into this country by Jewish people, by Jewish influence, by Jewish money. Because Jews no dominated banking. Nothing happened no in the West without the influence no of Jews because we dominated the fundamental tenet of banking. There was no discussion. Well, why is the Jewish question important to this question of because because Muslims are really the, hold on Muslims are really the demographic threat or they're sort of the point of the spear, right? Uh, I guess is the que is the idea that the Jews are the ones holding the spear. Well, I'm mean, here in America. The Muslims aren't really that big of a demographic threat. It's more uh, Hispanics or even Indians or or, or Chinese or have more people here than Muslims. But we are looking at a global trend that this guy pointed out. 
that what is happening here in America is basically happening everywhere around the globe. There's a difference between inviting people into the country and changing the laws so that they can vote and have citizenship and be treated preferentially to the native citizens of that country. There's a one thing, there's a difference between the natural flow of peoples versus, I don't know, Israel sending their missionaries to the to Greece and Italy and inviting these African migrants or whoever they might be into these foreign countries. Those are two wildly different things. Well, I agree. There's a lot of factors at play. And obviously, we know that Jews are generally vastly on the side of immigration. We know that Jews are at the forefront of pushing these things. And I can't control, you know, I can't control the Jewish people. I'm only half Jew, and it's like Jews are going to Jew and all these different issues at hand. Now, obviously, Jews are at the forefront of pushing multiculturalism and open immigration. You might have a handful of Jews like Halsey or Luke Ford and um, like Luke Ford always says, every single major Jewish organization is pro-immigration. Um, you know, but as I said, that that uh, you might face Jews at City Hall, but if it came down to violence or demographic, Jews aren't a threat. I mean, God forbid, um, you're going to lose to the Jew maybe in university or at City Hall or in the pocketbook. Uh, side note on that, she said that her grandmother on her mother's side was Jewish, matriarchal lines. She's a Jew. Well, only according to the believers of the religion, and obviously most Jews don't believe in their own religion. It's tribal to them, and that would be disputed. So in this case, you're going to include the one-eighth Jew because she's pro-immigration. And yeah, it's likely that uh, her being Jewish influences her views on multiculturalism and immigration, but that would probably apply to uh, maybe Ash's children also, and toward anyone who's intermarried. If you're inter intermarried, the product of intermarriage, you're more much more likely to be... Uh, pro-immigration. And, and maybe if I mean, we could continue, if you want to mention that this guy in his manifesto had considered, he said Muslims weren't his enemy, that the only person he considered his enemy were whites who had converted to Islam. Um, what do you guys think is going to happen? What does this mean for white people generally and perhaps the dissident right more specifically? Anybody? Well, what are they going to do to you? What are they going to do to you they haven't done already? in terms of uh, censorship in, in that respect. Yeah, there, yeah, there's going to be an escalation in that regard. Well, I don't think so. I think you're going to have people like this that are just saying crazy things and the gun addicts and things like that. But at this point, you know, it's going to be like the... Tie this to gun addicts again, man. But I'm saying it's like the boy who cried yeah. wolf that uh, what are going to do to you they haven't done already besides, you know, God forbid, America. I, I think they're going to play right into this guy's hand. Like well, God he forbid, Jews might openly Jews, declared might his intent with doing this. Yeah, and that's actually yeah. This interesting thing I noticed was like, are they actually going to crack down on white people and guns? Because wouldn't that be giving the shooter what he wants? Yep. Well, he wanted an and, acceleration like Norvin. I don't think he wanted guns to be, but he wanted to be an, he wanted to be an accelerationist, and you're just like Armageddon's coming, and uh, you know when they start coming for the guns, that's when more people are going to you know say. What this guy said, the you know, God forbid, the proper time to act was yesterday, and the next best time to act is now. And that when they start coming for the guns, God forbid, that you're going to have a whole bunch of people who say like, oh, I didn't take this serious, but now I'm going to take it serious. And unfortunately, okay, we've all been talking about this issue for a long time and research. People aren't going to have the time to research it. And God forbid, uh, as I said, the natural condition will be violent. So the people who haven't uh, had the time to research and just the uh, you know when they come for the guns. Um, you know, God forbid what's going to happen then. Okay. Gas, fire, vehicular attacks, plane attacks, any means were available. I had the will and I had the resources. I chose firearms. The effect it would have on social discourse, the extra media coverage they would provide, and the effect it would have on the politics of the United States and thereby the political situation of the world. The U.S. is torn into many factions by its Second Amendment along state social, cultural, and most importantly, racial lines. With enough pressure, the left wing within the United States will seek to abolish the Second Amendment, and the right wing within the U.S. will see this as an attack on their very freedom and liberty. This attempted abolishment of rights by the left will result in a dramatic polarization of the people in the United States and eventually a fracturing of the U.S. along cultural and racial lines.